According to the U.S. Department of Justice, approximately 4,500 children under the age of 18 are incarcerated in adult jails on any given day. This statistic became a reality for 20-year-old Dante Glover, who grew up in public housing. The bond between he and his first period biology teacher, Dwayne Thomas, began when Thomas stepped in to help. He had to go home every day and watch his little brother be hungry. And so I would ask him, was he hungry? And he said, yes. So we went over to the concession stand and the Booster Club members gave him food and he would, he would hold on to it. So after I saw him doing that a couple times, I asked him, you're not going to eat that? And he told me that he was going to save it so they could make sure they had something to eat when they got home. I had Thomas in my corner. He was always trying to beat up for me and always trying to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Tragedy struck when Dwayne Thomas was notified that Dante had been arrested. Dwayne had sat with Dante in the juvenile detention center under smaller charges, but this time it was much more serious. I got arrested for, for armed robbery. I was charged with four, four felonies. My case wasn't looking pretty for me. I went and visited him at the detention center and I just, I just immediately asked why. I looked at him dead in his face and said, why? I just felt like I had to do what was necessary to provide for myself provide for my little brother. It was just mind blowing that this kid had to sacrifice his self to try to make sure he eats. Nothing could prepare Dante for the news that his public defender brought. The state had picked up his case, which meant at 15 years old, he would be tried as an adult. He didn't understand what that meant to be um, adjudicated as an adult, which means you don't stay at the detention center. You go over to Orient Road uh, with the grown, grown people. Dante's case was another run of the mill case. It troubled me that he was a first-time offender and the allegations were uh, fairly serious. I went to court for my bond. The judge looked at me and then he was like, well, your bond is going to be 300000 Good luck, because you have the worst case in here right now. And then he just dismissed me. Even with the odds stacked against him, Dwayne Thomas remained by Dante's side, offering advice and advocating for him. He immediately started asking for a bond. I, just, I told him, look, even if you bonded out, you don't have a place to go. I'm a stable place to go to make sure you stay out of trouble and they're not gonna let you back in school. And so he voluntarily stayed in jail the entire time his case was pending because he was actually able to keep up with his schoolwork um, within the jail system uh, through the public school system. He got on the good side with all the guards and things because he started tutoring all the other kids um, at the jail. Dwayne Thomas encouraged Dante to write letters to the judge and the prosecutor in an effort to show them his true character. He wrote um, these letters. It was just, they were just so powerful when you read the letters because he, he has a way to write. The words that he put on paper, it, it, was, it was phenomenal. His public defender, Antina Mobley, um, shared some information with me about Dante's history and also a letter that he wrote about himself when he was in jail um, telling me about his life. But Dwayne didn't stop there. He worked to make sure that Dante stayed positive. By giving him money for canteen and the phone, he reminded Dante that he was not alone. He said, mail me books, even though we had books, just to, just to keep me on a positive note, just to show that it is somebody out here that care about you and like, don't just lose hope because he has faith in me. He was showing how good his, how, how much faith he had in me so I could have some faith in myself. And he just kept the question in my head, what would you do differently if you were given a second chance? If you don't think about nothing else, think about that question. We would talk about all these plans about school and his grades and his career and his future and, and sports and things like that. So we would always talk about that thing, those things to keep his, um, his spirits up. Finally, Dante's luck appeared to change when the prosecutor in his case began to fight for him in court. When I was looking at his case, something stood out to me because it didn't feel like, you know, why would this kid start, you know, with an armed robbery case out the bat? He was saying that he motions that Dante be recommended um, as a candidate for the PTI, which is the pretrial intervention program. I'm saying that if um, he would complete uh, so many hours of community service and all these tasks and, and do not read, um, offend, like break any law, like not even a bicycle ticket, um, in a period of time, then um, his charges would be dropped and he wouldn't be a convicted felon. So he was just saying, I just feel like this kid has more potential than this. Like, I feel like he can make that second chance. And I feel like if, he were, if I, we did give him that second chance, he will, he will like take advantage of it and make better for himself. The judge looked at Dante and says, if you mess this up, 
I'm gonna send you to prison as long as I can. The judge agreed to drop his charges, allowing him to avoid prison time, but only if Dwayne Thomas became Dante's full-time mentor. Right then and there, I was like, yes, 100%, uh, no doubt um, I would do it. Dante finished the 18-month program in half of the time, proving again his fighting spirit. After being released, Dante moved in with Dwayne, eventually leading to a legal adoption. I tell people all the time, that's my son. Um, that's my son, no doubt. Um, I love him like he was a biological son. I love him, no doubt, and um, he feels the same way. Um, he feels the same way. <laughs> Dante showed everyone that he didn't take his second chance lightly, graduating third in his class and getting accepted to 32 different universities. As a show of their pride in him, his supporters from the court system threw him a graduation party. He, he gave a speech at that thing. Not, there was not a dry eye in the crowd when he gave that speech in, in that place to all these judges, lawyers, uh, courtroom secretaries, because everybody remembered that. He was such a talk of the courthouse. Dante has found great success at Northwest Missouri State University, where he received a full scholarship. But he has not forgotten where he came from. I was the first person to graduate in my family college, first person to go to college, first person to graduate high school, period. This is my chance to make a new start for our family, like start something new. And the only way to do that is now. And the only way to do that is basically, I feel like it's through me. Nelson Mandela once said, our human compassion binds us the one to the other, not in pity or patronizingly, but as human beings who have learned how to turn our common suffering into hope for the future. Thank you.